China's Belt and Road is going after the West. And New Zealand is the first stop. Will this be one belt, one ring to rule them all? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. China's One Belt, One Road initiative. It's Beijing's trillion dollar infrastructure investment scheme. And it's kind of like the One Ring. Sure, it looks shiny and nice, but if you put it on, you might find yourself enslaved to Sauron. Or in this case, the Chinese Communist Party, which I'm pretty sure is worse since it's actually real. A lot of developing countries that have joined the Belt and Road end up unable to pay back Chinese loans. They get trapped in debt and are forced to give the Chinese Communist Party their souls, as well as strategic assets like natural resources and shipping ports. Most countries that have joined the Belt and Road are poor developing countries. But the Chinese Communist Party is now making a push to get Western developed countries to join in as well. This year, Beijing nabbed its first G7 country, Italy. And China's doing some major PR by saying the Belt and Road will from now on be green and sustainable. Somehow, using these buzzwords must be really convincing, because now New Zealand has just joined the Belt and Road. I get it, New Zealand is green. And it is sustainable, like its amazing grass-fed dairy farms. And of course, New Zealand is the place where Lord of the Rings was filmed, so it seems so natural. You know, I once visited the set of Hobbiton dressed as Hugo Weaving dressed as Elrond. You've probably never seen that episode, but you will now? Anyway, New Zealand is a beautiful country, which is why they filmed Lord of the Rings there. But now, like Middle Earth, New Zealand is also under the watchful eye of a shadowy, sinister force, the Chinese Communist Party. In 2008, New Zealand signed a free trade agreement with China, and in the years that followed, their trade with China tripled. So has the Communist Party's influence. Chinese dissidents in New Zealand have been harassed. People with questionable ties to the Communist Party have been elected to powerful positions in the New Zealand government. And people who have criticized this have been threatened, like Professor Anne-Marie Brady, who reported that her home was broken into, her car was being tampered with, and she was the recipient of threats through the post and via phone. So it's kind of shocking that New Zealand's trade minister recently went to Beijing for a Belt and Road forum, and came back saying New Zealand wants to join the Belt and Road. I believe we have a clip of that. Against the power of Morto, there can be no victory. Oops, wrong clip. What the New Zealand trade minister actually said was, it seems more likely that we can find a win-win situation with China. And if you believe that, I've got a shiny new ring of power to give you. What the trade minister said is in a way even more disturbing, because win-win is exactly the phrase Chinese leader Xi Jinping uses to describe the Belt and Road. And anyone who's been paying attention should know that win-win just means the Chinese regime wins either way. It means the country either pays back their loans with interest, or China takes their strategic assets instead. Of course, a lot of developing countries feel like they have no real choice, that it's either Chinese investment or no investment at all. But is New Zealand really in that same position? Actually, the previous New Zealand government had originally signed a Belt and Road Agreement in 2017 but it never really went anywhere because there were concerns over having too much Chinese influence in the country. So how does the current New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern feel about it? I mean, I know I would be a little concerned if my trade minister went to a country that was actively trying to undermine mine and came back spouting propaganda slogans. Well, after the trade minister's return, Ardern said, the fact that we've taken a little pause as we've worked to really flesh out that arrangement has been no bad thing because Belt and Road has really evolved. Oh yes, it's evolved so much. I mean, it's now green and sustainable. And when has the Chinese Communist Party ever lied? Actually, never mind, we don't have time to go through that list. Incidentally, Prime Minister Ardern's Labour Party has accepted donations that may be linked to the Communist Party. But don't worry, because the opposition National Party has also been accused of hiding political donations that are possibly linked to the Chinese Communist Party. The Communist Party knows how to cover all of its bases. 
So far, there have not been any concrete investment plans for New Zealand. That's because New Zealand is not like most of the developing countries that have joined the Belt and Road. New Zealand doesn't need massive infrastructure investment. But New Zealand's finance minister feels New Zealand has a lot to offer China, specifically greening the Belt and Road, or helping address some of the issues around transparency, or whether it's using our regulatory systems which are amongst the best in the world. Yes, China is the perpetual bad boy. The United States, Canada, Australia, they never really understood China. But New Zealand does. New Zealand will be the one to make China change. But there's also the pressure of missing the boat. The idea that if New Zealand doesn't join up now, China will take its big economy to another country, one more willing to put out. Now, New Zealand security agencies have been saying they're concerned about foreign interference from China particularly in the case of Huawei, a Chinese company that the U.S. has said poses a national security risk. And New Zealand's security agencies were able to block a New Zealand telecom company from using Huawei equipment. But Prime Minister Ardern was quick to say there was no final ban on Huawei. All this has led security experts to question if maybe New Zealand is at risk of turning into a Nazgul. New Zealand is part of the Five Eyes, an intelligence network set up in 1955 between the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. But former CIA China expert Peter Mattis has suggested maybe New Zealand shouldn't be in it anymore because of the level of Chinese Communist Party influence. Australia faces the same issues. The difference is, in New Zealand, the former and current prime ministers don't seem to realize there's a problem. And there's a number of well-connected voices of support inside New Zealand that want to join the Belt and Road. Air New Zealand, for example. More than half the company is owned by the New Zealand government. Its chief executive said, We're a little country. We've got to step into this space. Aw, oh, like a hobbit. The problem is, if you actually put a hobbit in front of a dragon, the dragon will bite his head off. Sorry, Bilbo. Countries and businesses around the world have been making this mistake for years. People see the gold and forget there's a giant dragon. So how has China trade worked out so far for Air New Zealand? Over the 13 years it's been in China, Air New Zealand has lost $100 million. That's because the Chinese government gives preference to Chinese airlines. But surely just because this is the same story that happens again and again, doesn't mean tomorrow won't be different. So hand over the ring. What do you think of New Zealand and the Belt and Road? Leave your comments below. And before you go, may I remind you, China Uncensored is not part of the Belt and Road. So instead of getting billions of dollars from the Communist Party, we rely on several thousand small contributions from viewers like you, fans who support us through the crowdfunding website Patreon. And as a way of saying thanks for your support, I'll answer your questions on the show. Today's question comes from Charlie Matsubara. When a CCP panda takes off its cuddly, dim-witted mask to reveal its real face, what animal is behind it? You mean there's something more terrifying than a panda? I shudder even to imagine such a thing. Ugh. But I get what you're saying. What will happen when the world finally realizes that win-win cooperation is a lie? Well, I imagine a lot of people in the West might have to answer some pretty uncomfortable questions about Oh, I don't know. How they helped build those systems of mass surveillance in China. Or why they helped censor the Chinese internet. Or handed over data to Chinese authorities. Or the World Health Organization has been trying so hard to promote China's organ transplant system when Chinese state-run hospitals are killing innocent people for those same organs. And then everyone will realize pandas aren't cuddly. Nope, not cuddly at all. Thanks for your question. And thank you to everyone watching. Even if you can't support the show on Patreon, you can support the show by liking this video, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends and family. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.